What's up, guys? Ryan here at Signature Edits, and inside of this Premiere Pro tutorial, we're going to take a quick look at the Lumetri color panel and what to do when it lets you down. And by that, I mean you've got a really high contrast scene, your highlights are just too bright. And so you try taking the highlights down, and that's great, it's sort of helping in the highlights, but you'll notice that everything in the entire image is getting darker as well. Really not super helpful, because now I have to take my exposure up to make everything brighter, and you can see that now my highlights are blown all over again. So it's like, what was the point of that? I don't know. Let me try work on it. In the meantime, here's a workaround I found. So what you want to do is go down here to your little project panel. We're going to select color mat, and we're just going to create something somewhere around there, medium gray. We'll call it medium gray. Honestly, there's no specific color you need to find in here, but I'm just playing with that and it seems to work well for me. So I'm going to grab that, take it up here, and you'll see what I'm doing here in a second. Don't worry. So I'm just going to make sure I don't overwrite any clips while I'm doing that. So let's drag it over here, make it smaller. Okay. So we've got that on top of the clip. Now you can see problem solved. It's perfect. Absolutely beautiful. No, not quite. We're going to take the blend mode. We're going to set that to multiply. And you can see that obviously because we set that color to gray, it's taking that gray color, multiplying it on top of the other colors and everything is darker. Okay, well it's darker, but what are you doing now, Ryan? Well, here's the real secret. We're going to hit this little mask icon here. We're going to create an ellipse mask. And now you can see we've got an area with that multiply there. And we've got the rest of the area that is not being affected by that multiply mask. I'm going to drag it out like this. I'm going to take my feather up really, really high. So it's super blended. And you're going to recognize this very similar to what you do in Lightroom with a radial filter. You're basically just going to go up here and then we're going to invert that mask. And now you can see we've got our subjects here, nice and bright, everything else darkened down. So from there, all we have to do is just take our opacity of the entire layer down somewhere more appropriate. And just like that, we've rescued a lot of those highlights. Now, of course, this isn't a perfect method. It's really going to depend on the shot. Um, but by doing it, oh, hello. Oh, come now. We don't want two masks. We just want one mask. <laughs> by doing it and really getting it dialed in, you can keep it pretty subtle and make a massive difference in your footage by just not blowing everything up. So here's without that mask, and here's with. So now I can grab the entire clip. I can add some contrast to it, take the blacks down, take the highlights down a little bit, and there we go. Here's before and after. We just rescued a lot of the detail in that snow that we otherwise would have lost. So it's not perfect by any means, but in some situations, you're going to find that this technique is absolute gold. In others, eh, it's okay. So let me show you another example here. Let's duck over to this shot right here. So what I'm actually finding is really handy. I'll grab that mask. I've already got the settings dialed in, and I will sometimes take it as a layer across my entire project. Then I'll go through shot by shot with a project like this where we've got tons of really bright snow. I'll go through shot by shot, and wherever I need it, I'll just add it back in. So let's make sure we can paste it right up here. Put it on top of this shot. Bear with me. Okay. So now all we're going to do, grab that mask, click and drag it over here to our girls. Because the real only area that's getting super blown out is up here, I could even extend that mask over onto the rest of the shot. So it's just like using a radio filter in Lightroom, super, super fast, simple, and way better using that localized adjustment than you're ever going to get by trying to do this just with global adjustments to the entire Lumetri color panel. So you can see, we'll dial that back somewhere around, say, 32, 33. Here's without, and here's with. Is it perfect? No. And I mean, I could keep fiddling with it. I could dial that mask in a little bit better, get it nice and clean. But the basic premise shows you what you can do and how helpful that can be really, really quickly dialing in your color and just making sure you maximize the dynamic range of your shots without trying to do the whole highlights down, exposure up, and not really achieving anything. Now, you might actually be saying, okay, Ryan, that's really cool, but why don't you actually take that one step further and just extend it and use the Lumetri color panel on top of that layer you've already got going on? That good sir, is a great, great question. So what you can do, of course, is the same sort of thing. We can create another, let's go with an adjustment layer, paste that on top of our medium gray shot. Just make sure we're not overriding. 
and zoom back in. And now from there, I can actually just take the highlights down and then mask that selection out. So same sort of thing, we're going to invert it. We're going to take that mask feather way the heck up, make our mask a little larger. So now Lumetri is taking the highlights down in the rest of the image, but not in that specific area. So sometimes that's a better workaround or doing a combination between the two. Of course, we're not going to push it too, too far. Something like that. So here's before, after. So it's pulling those highlights back even a little bit more. So sometimes that can be really handy. Let's try on that earlier clip that we took a look at somewhere in here. That's a great one. Or this one. So we'll just paste it in. Shoot. Hello. Grab my mask. Make sure it's on top of the right people. And just like that, before, after. Right, so you can selectively use your color panel as well. You don't have to do it on top of the entire image. And that's the main point of this, is start thinking about this a little bit more like Lightroom if you're adding specific adjustment layers on top of there, adjustment brushes, filters, gradients. You can do the same thing inside of Premiere Pro. By doing that, you're gonna get much better color, at least if you're a novice like me who just is kind of figuring things out as he goes. So I hope this has been helpful to somebody out there. If you have a better way of doing it, please leave it in the comments below. I'd love to hear your ideas, share it with the community, pay it forward, because it seems like I'm always finding these things out last. So I would love to find out some of these things ahead of some other people so I can share it with people like you. Anyways, now that we've done that, if this video was helpful, again, hit that like button, subscribe for more great content, and I'll see you in the next video. In the meantime, I wish you luck with your projects and your color grading. <laughs> Go create something awesome. Peace.